All right, folks, it's Bass Action back in action here. In this video, we are going to go over the converse Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to do a review of the regular, just some problems of Pythagorean theorem. So the converse is something new, and the converse Pythagorean theorem is going to allow us to determine what type of triangle we have based on its angles. So it's going to allow us to determine whether or not we have a right triangle, an obtuse triangle, or an acute triangle. And up until now, that's not been something we've been able to do. So we're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem itself, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Remember, c has to be the longest side. And it's okay if you write this the other way around and you start with the a squared plus b squared. The reason why I always start with the c squared is because the c squared is going to be the most important uh, value in our three numbers that we're going to look at, and it's going to be our driving number to help us figure out what we need to do next. So I like to start with the c squared being the longest and do my analysis from there. So if we can find that our c squared actually equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, it'll be a right triangle. If we can find that the c squared value is more than the sum of the squares of the other two values, it'll be obtuse, and less than, it will be an acute triangle. Now, if you find that the numbers, the three numbers that you find, do actually form a right triangle, and, and the and is very important, and those numbers are all whole numbers, meaning no decimals, no, um, no decimals, no radicals, nothing like that, um, then the numbers would be referred to as a Pythagorean triple. So a very common example of a Pythagorean triple is 3, 4, and 5. And you guys have seen that one probably a lot. So let's take a look at some examples and see how this plays out. And let's look at our directions um, because there's something important in these directions. It says determine the type, if any, of the triangle meaning that remember the three numbers that you're given may not form a triangle at all. So our quick check from last semester that you do always need to pay attention to is whether or not the, tri the numbers make a triangle, meaning our fast check was the sum of the two smallest would be greater than the third. Nothing to do with the squares, just a quick sum. So six plus 11 is more than 16, so we're good to go to do our analysis. Now our biggest side here is 16, and when I square 16, I'm going to get 256. Now I'm going to square the other two values. 6 squared is 36, 11 squared is 121, and when I add my 36 and my 121, I'm going to get 157. Now when I do this comparison, the c squared that I found first is more, so this triangle will be obtuse. On the next problem, when I look at this, 5 plus 11 equals 16, and we remember from last semester that if you have 16 equals 16, this is not a triangle at all, in which case there is no type that you can determine because it doesn't make a triangle, so you would stop. On the next problem, we need to figure out which of these values is the largest, and if you don't have a calculator, the easiest thing to do is to think of each of them in terms of their squares. This would be, 4 would be the square root of 16, 8 would be the square root of 64, and if you square this value, you'll have 16 times 5, so this is the square root of 80. So the square root of 80 is going to be our biggest value here. So when I square that, as I just said, that's going to be 4 squared, which is 16, times the square root of 5 squared is 5. That's where I got that 80. Now let's square the other values. 4 squared is 16, 8 squared is 64, 16 and 64 is 80. So those two values are the same, so this is a right triangle. On the next one, again, we need to figure out what is our largest. We can think of 5 as the square root of 25, 7 is the square root of 49, and my 2 square root of 17 is the square root of 4 times 17, which is 68. So that's going to be my largest value. So I'm going to figure this one out first. So this is my 4 times my 17 when I square it, so that's 68. Then I'm going to have a 25 plus a 49, 
and when I add my 25 and my 49, I'm going to get 74. Now my C squared, when I do my comparison, is smaller, so this is an acute triangle. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem, that's all we need to anal anal analyze there. And then I want you to go back, if you've got the foldable, I want you to flip to the inside on the left. I'm just gonna be able to scroll down on mine and we're just gonna do a quick review of some examples and just applying the Pythagorean theorem. We've seen this before, but let's just do a quick review. On A, if we wanna find the length of DC, we would put an X on it. Then I would have an X squared, because it's the hypotenuse, an 81 plus three square root of five squared. So X squared, 81. Remember, when we square the radical, we need to multiply it by itself. So we're gonna square each piece. So I'm gonna have a nine times five, or a 45. So I've got my 81 and my 45, and that's gonna give me X will then be the square root of 126. Remember, we want to simplify our radicals. So when we look at that 126, we're looking for a perfect square that goes into it. I can see that it's a nine that's gonna divide into it. So my answer for this problem would be three square root of 14, and I could put a little U on it for units. I'm gonna actually go down, I'm gonna do this problem next because it's actually the easier of the two problems because it's the most review. I'm gonna have some building. I'm gonna have a ladder, don't worry that this isn't drawn to scale. My ladder is 10 feet. It's two feet from the bottom of the wall, so I'm trying to find how high up the wall it goes. So when I set up my Pythagorean theorem, the 10 is the hypotenuse, so I have a 100 equals four plus x squared. X is gonna be the square root then of 96. 96 I know is divisible by 16. So this is gonna become the square root of 16 times six. So my length is four square root of six feet. And if it asked you for it as a decimal, you would type that in your calculator. Now. This problem here is a very, very common question. I often refer to this as a stick in a box, okay? You're trying to find the longest segment that would fit inside the box that goes along the diagonal. Now, if you struggle with this one, I suggest going and getting maybe just a shoe box in your house so that you can visualize what it looks like looking down on the box. Um, I'm gonna actually take these values that are over here on the right-hand side and I'm gonna move them to the left. So I'm gonna start with the four and I'm gonna start with this bottom piece. And I'm gonna imagine this right triangle as I look down inside the box. This is why I say you might wanna go find a box in your house. And when you look down inside the box, one side is four, one side is 18, and there's a diagonal as you look down into the box and that's what we're gonna find first. So I'm gonna have an x squared, and I'm gonna have a four squared plus an 18 squared. That's gonna give me four, uh, sorry, 16 plus my 18 squared. That's gonna give me the diagonal of a square root of 340. Now, normally we would simplify this radical, but we're not gonna simplify that radical because we're gonna use this value in our next step in the problem. So the next step of the problem is gonna have us look at another right triangle that's formed. And this side right here is two inches. I'm just pulling that from the other side of the picture. Then I'm gonna use this diagonal that I just calculated. So this is gonna be, if you're looking at your shoebox, it's like a triangle that's um, standing up inside the box. And then now we're gonna find the length of this and we're gonna call it Y. So using that triangle, I can now find that I have a y squared, that's the diagonal of the box. I'm gonna do my two squared, that's that vertical piece, and then I'm gonna square, oops, I meant to write a plus there, I'm gonna square that 340 that I had from my previous step. So y is gonna be four plus 340, so oops, square root. So y is the square root, of 344, and then I'm gonna look and see 
whether that is divisible by anything, and it is divisible by four, a nice perfect square. So this is gonna simplify to two square root of 86, and we can also label it as inches. Okay, you definitely need to know the stick in the box problem, and we are going to do more of those. So make sure that you are comfortable with that one that is actually probably new for most of you.